Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your not-so-secret identity? Who, me? Why, sure. Uh, hi, Jackie. Uh, Jim Cummings and uh, what's, uh, I feel like that, that old game show, What's My Line? And my line is, I am a voice actor. <laughs> I used to watch that all the time on the Game Show Network. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, all those old crazy things. It was, you know, some guy was a, I am a shoelace re-tipper. You know, well, you're safe. I'm just a voice actor. Nothing exciting is a shoelace re-tipper. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a hard job, but I, I think yeah, it voice, does. It does. <laughs> I think voice acting has its own difficulties too. So <laughs> that's true. Sore throat, I suppose. But so far, so good. Well, that's always good to hear. Now, obviously, since it's your first time on the show, I have to ask the most obvious of obvious questions. What sparked your interest into acting? What did what did who? What did inspire me? Yeah, what what sparked your interest into acting? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I uh, I didn't even know that I was interested. I thought it was just stuff I did all the time. You know, I, but apparently uh, it uh, something stuck with me. I, I just thought that... Uh, you know, guys like Paul Winchell and Mel Blanc and, and Paul Fries and her, I just thought they were having fun and they were doing things that used to get me kicked out of class. So <laughs> I thought, wow, you know, that wait, that, people like it when they do that. Maybe I'll do it that way. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll go down this road and, you know, God forbid I'll make a couple of bucks and, and be able to, you know, support myself. Who does that get that I could turn monkey hour into a career, right? So, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was always the kid that I, I was in a lot of bands as a, and uh, when I was 13, I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I played at the, uh, our, what was it, our Lady of Mount Carmel's social center dance for something, and uh, myself and three buddies, I played drums and sang, and, uh, you know, we had a guitar, bass, and a saxophone player, and they gave us each 10 bucks, and I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Because it was like, you know, I was 13, and I, I just made $10 for doing stuff I did all day long for free. And I thought, wow, I'm going to do this. And then, then that kind of segued into doing a lot of plays. I was always in plays as a kid. And so I had the music. I had the, the, uh, the acting. And, uh, and, you know, I still sing, and I still am a voice actor. And, it, and it's, I just can't uh, – it, it worked out great. <laughs> Well, no, that's obviously we, we've seen that through your career, which yeah. is a plus. I mean, you know, for, for a lot of our fans, um, our demographic is fairly, uh, fairly young, but for, for the older fans we have, you know, they, they've grown up with your voice for, for years and uh, they always remember you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's amazing. I, you know, I, I feel like I've got so many friends that uh, I've met tons of them and then there's tons of them I haven't met and, and I, I know they're out there. I get to meet them at different functions and um whether it's a party or a con convention or and it's uh it's just amazing you know to know that I, I get to touch so many people and put a smile on their face you know it's it's a blessing and i'm very 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 grateful I'm very grateful well we're grateful for your great work yeah. so, oh, so it comes circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll work <laughs> But, you know, you've been in the business for, for quite a while. You know, when you go mm -hmm. into the studio, is there anything that surprises you anymore? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, hmm, I don't think so. So far, so good. I mean, occasionally the headphones will, will feed back, and that, <laughs> that actually that doesn't surprise me anymore. So, but, uh, but uh, you know, so far, so good. I'm, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm open for a new surprise here or two here, <laughs> but... Uh, but I think I got the territory mapped out, you know, knock on wood. I mean, there's been so many, especially in the booth, too, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, technological advances. Um, stuff has changed definitely from when they used to do it on tape uh, yeah. to now. Oh, where that's for sure, yeah. Slap it in, in Pro Tools. <laughs> yeah, no more tape. No more tape, that's for sure. But that's, uh, you know, it, it helps with editing. That You know, it used to be you have to sit there and slice and dice and it, it, out, out like this sometimes. Oops, cut too much. But, uh, you know, the digital age, everything's cool. You know, I've got my little studio right here at home, and, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of things right out of home, right out of my home. And then, uh, but, you know, with animation and singing, you still have to go into the studio. And I like that because I have a sort of a blue-collar attitude toward a no-collar career. You know, so that, that works for me. Well, I also think it's easier to to go into the studio. There's something I, I feel like there's almost like an invisible string that holds you up 
when you when you perform versus when you're in your own space and you're mm -hmm. comfortable. So. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, and it's always good, even too. A lot of times, uh, you know, different producers have noticed that that we all we're all actors. We're all looking for attention, and the more people that are in the booth and that are in there, like when you're recording a show or a movie or a song, and and they're clapping and laughing, and you can see their faces. They're all smiling and having a good time. That that enhances it too, you know, because it's a uh, it's a uh, an instant feedback, and it's a bit of a you know, it's a boost. You know, it makes you feel good. You go, okay, good. We're on the roll. Well, let's let's do it. Let's do it. You know, it's kind of great. Love it. Yeah, I could see how that would be really nice and immersive. And it's it's kind of a shame because um, it seems like video games still haven't, you know, grasped the concept of getting everybody together yet. Well, those uh, those are a, more of a tedious process. It's, uh, you know, because you're going through with all the vari variables. And, you know, if you walk down this hallway, this happens. If you climb up those stairs, that happens. If you jump through this, you know, trap door, that happens. So you have to you know, walk your way through all the all the possibilities and all the story angles and everything. And it's a, it's more of a workman. It's it's you know you're laying bricks, <laughs> you know, with with video games a lot of times, and um, you know the the, the story is put together uh, after the fact rather than you know as you go through it, you know, with very few exceptions. You know, you're you're recording this possibility that that battle this battle this confrontation this meeting this you know what i mean you're going through all these things so it doesn't doesn't really lend itself to um conversation with another person because those conversations don't occur in real time they're, they're put together after all the possibilities for conversation if that makes sense you know whereas a, a you know a a movie or an individual cartoon that's the story you know, you've got a 22-minute long story for a, a cartoon, or 11, or seven, uh, and of course, if it's a movie, then then you know that you know that story too. Whereas a video game, anything can happen. You know, so it's all disjointed and all cho chopped up, and and there is some assembly required. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cool thing with video games, at least from what I hear from um, you know voiceover actors who have more experience in that, is you know, the scripts are so long. Like you, you actually sure. look at a script and it's oh, literally like I mean, a yeah. Harry Potter book. <laughs> oh yeah, they're like phone books. You know, they hand them to you and it's like boom. And you're like, okay, well we won't be doing all this today, will we? Right? <laughs> <laughs> as long as they keep the screams near the weekend, we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh boy. Well, you know what? I'm going to shut the door here, Jackie, because my dog, <laughs> the, the gardener's just showed up, and my dog's going to go crazy. Hi, everybody. Sorry. This is uh, real life here. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally I heard Jim Cummings' dog. No, that's not me. It's actually my real dog. It's uh, <laughs> it's not me going, <laughs> so see, that. okay, that was me, but uh, we're back. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And if, if it makes you feel better, I've had my cat interrupt plenty of my interviews where she's oh, uh, okay. tried very well to knock over my mic or she scared me so bad by like just licking me in the back of my leg and i'm just like oh, oh god <laughs> oh that's funny well i'm in good company then exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. for, for video game works you know since since there is a lot of um, screaming and reaction sounds um you know obviously you've had a lot of practice with that how do you how do you deal with it though and how do you keep your voice in tip-top shape yeah, well, you know, I'm not a I'm not a big uh, screamer, you know. I'm I'd i much rather uh, take the role that's so you know I'll be the narrator. I'll be the guy who sits around the fire and tells stories, you know, <laughs> rather than rather than uh, you know just go crazy. And uh, I I don't want to be the guy who falls all the way from the third moon of Jupiter down to, you know, the surface, uh, you know, in an acid bath on fire, screaming the whole time. <laughs> You know that? Uh, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll be, I'll tell the story of that guy <laughs> as opposed to being him. You know, uh, it's, you got, you got to take care of your pipes. When we, when we did uh, Taz, I, um, they were very gracious in that um, I requested that we, we do Tasmania, you know, the, uh, the show Tasmania, we, it, one of my favorites, but I think it's a little underrated because it, uh, it's I don't I don't see it in reruns I don't know where it is out there but I was crazy about it and, and all my buddies were too, everybody that worked on it Art Vitello and Rob Paulson and uh, Danny Castellaneta Maurice LaMarche Miriam Flynn Debbie Derryberry, on and on um, John Aston, um, you know uh, we were all crazy about that show but it wasn't there, it didn't uh, it didn't it's not in syndication anywhere but if you see it out there jump on it folks you're gonna love it, and it was so 
tough on my pipes that I requested on Friday afternoons. Can we just do it Friday afternoons? <laughs> so I'd have Saturday and Sunday to heal. And then by Monday I, w- I was back again, you know? So, you know, you do have to, it is a con- consideration, you know, it's a, it's an instrument, right? Your voice and, uh, you know, baseball pitchers, uh, Hey, they, you know, their arms, their elbows hurt. Well, you know, voiceover guys, we, we have to take care of our pipes, right? So that's it. one of the hazards of the game. Well, have there been any instances where you've actually, you know, been unable to do a, a job? Maybe uh, once or twice, career? yeah, once or twice. You know, whenever I've had a, like a bad enough cold, did a, I know that I'm just gonna sound like this. I said, you know, I, I'm not even gonna go in, you know, because it's just, you know, they live forever. You know, the the uh, these cartoons. I mean, they're they're amazing, and they they stay there forever, and. You know, once or twice, uh, I remember back, I think, one of the Winnie the Pooh episodes and one of the tailspins, I went to work and I had a terrible cold, and I should have just stayed home, but I thought I'd tough it out. And, you know, once in a blue moon, I'll hear it, and I'll go, oh, gosh, oh, gosh, that's embarrassing. What was I thinking? God, I I should have stayed home. I had such a sore throat or a cold. So I, you know, I, I don't do that anymore. I'll just say, you know, I'll just bite the bullet and say, I'm sorry, I can't come in because they can't record. And no, I'm not doing a voice, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you paid your dues, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I know with a lot of voice actors, they, they're really apprehensive about saying, oh, I can't come in, but it always seems like it's better not to go in when you're sick because you don't want to risk getting everybody else sick. <laughs> That's right. Uh, absolutely. That, too. Yeah, I mean, even if you're flying solo, you still have to, you still have to, uh, you see somebody, so. No, I agree. It just stays out there, and then you're embarrassed forever. So who needs it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned earlier in the in the conversation about going to um, different events and conventions, and I know we see you very often at uh, Kineticon. One of uh, one of my reporters always goes to that convention. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... I've been there a couple of times. Nice folks. Oh, good. You like had like Connecticut. Good to know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but are there any conventions coming up, um, either you know later later this year or next year, that um, you want to promote to the fans so they can meet you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, going to be at the uh, Sac Anime this weekend, uh, Sacramento Anime Convention, and I will be in uh, Wizard World Nashville in a few weeks. And I, speaking of uh, Connecticut, I'm getting close to Rhode Island. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's coming up in November. And, yeah, I'm just bouncing all around. <laughs> so stay tuned, right? Exactly. Coming to, coming to a con near you to, to bug you. So <laughs> keep, keep on the lookout. I certainly don't think that the fans are, are bugged. I, I think that <laughs> many of them are just so excited um, to meet, you know, a piece of their childhood. Oh, well, I'll take it. I'm excited for that, too. So that works both ways. I'm 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 a blessed fellow, that's for sure. Do you have any any funny um, convention stories? Maybe seeing some of your characters um, being you know cosplayed, or you know any any fan stories like that? Well, you know, it, uh, a lot of times, uh, a lot of kids are, come as uh, as Darkwing Duck, and there there'll be a little guy, you know, he'd be like seven or eight, and I look at the parents and I go, well, that's right, we're raising them right. And I said, oh, okay, because I'm thinking this kid can't possibly remember it. It was over <laughs> before he was on, right? Before he was born. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's right. We're, we're raising them on the classics. And sure enough, they'll have a big old stack of Darkwing uh, DVDs to, for me to sign. And so, so you know, it's kind of cool. And, um, you know, I always get a kick out of that. But the most interesting cosplay, uh, I have to tell you, was uh, – was actually well there was two there was one girl and bless her heart she was very very obviously a female type of girl but she came as hondo onaka from star wars clone wars or uh or uh you know the rebels and i was thinking okay that's interesting you know uh, good for her and uh she did a pretty good hondo onaka but there was a uh, set of friends who came as cat dog and uh you know one was dog and one was cat and they both had on long long yellow shirts uh long sleeve yellow shirts and they had cosplayed they they, they made, did the makeup and did the noses and one was cat and one was dog and they were connected by a, a tube of yellow that went from sort of 
their butts to their other one butt to the other butt, and they were just kind of stumbling around the convention. <laughs> I thought, oh, guys, you guys are earning your stripes. Anybody who cosplays as cat dog is all right with me. So, uh, you know, what can I tell you? It, it's just a lot of fun. I can think of so many awkward, um, you know, moments at the convention for this. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I don't want to know how they went to the bathroom either. Fair enough. I was thinking yeah. more getting stuck on doors and stuff, but that works. That too. <laughs> yeah, either way, yeah. I'll sit this one out, right? Exactly. <laughs> but for the fans out there, are there any, um, you know, projects coming up that you would like to promote or would like them to know about? Well, yes, indeed. Uh, you know, I've got a few things out there. There's one movie called, uh, it's going to be the, my second movie with John Cleese, and it's called Get Squirrely. And I'm, uh, it's kind of a takeoff on Ocean's Eleven and uh, Usual Suspects. And uh, Will Forte from uh, Saturday Night Live's in there. And, uh, oh, let's see, John Leguizamo, uh, myself, John, and it's John Cleese, which, you know, puts me through the moon. And uh, that's coming out soon. I don't know when, but it's coming. And there's another one called um, Sava, Heart of a Warrior, and it's from a Russian uh, production company. And, uh, oh, gosh, there's Sharon Stone's in there, uh, Joe Pesci, uh, Mila Jovovich, and uh, me. I'm always like the token non-celebrity, you know, <laughs> in these movies, <laughs> which is fine with me. I'll, I'll take it. I'm like, well, let's get Jim to be the singing doorknob. Okay, good. You know, um, but uh, so there's that one. And then uh, a, a really cool one coming out soon. Uh, I, I want to say 2016, uh, possibly. Um, and it's going to be called Charmed or Charming. And it's uh, Wilmer Valderrama from uh, that 70 shows is Prince Charming. And Avril Lavigne, Demi Lovato, and uh, Ashley Tisdale from High School Musical, they, they are going to be in it, as well as... Uh, uh, I'm not going to mess up her name, but I will say that her, she's known as Jem, G-E-M, and she's China's biggest pop star, and she's going to be in it, and it's going to be fun, and Tara Strong, the amazing one, uh, plays my wife, and I'm King Charming, by the way, and uh, it's going to be very cute. The, 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 the rub is that uh, uh, Prince Charming is, of course, charming to every woman he sees, every princess he sees, but turns out it was a curse put on him by one of his dad's ex-paramours. Bum, bum, bum. Who'd have thunk it? And it's going to be very cool. Uh, and what else? What else? Well, Transformers, Robots in Disguise, uh, Clampdown, and Thermidor are some of my uh, guys there. There are plenty of Mickey Mouse shorts in which uh, Pete comes out and gets his butt kicked appropriately. Uh, and also, there's going to be a new series coming out, Mickey's Roadster Racers. And uh, Pete will uh, appear prominently. You know, good old Pete. I always say he was tied for first place as the oldest Disney character on account of because he was in Steamboat Willie, see? <laughs> so I got that going for me. And what else, what else? You know, I always forget stuff when I start to remember that I did a bunch of Puss and Booths, uh, some breadwinners. I've uh, been fortunate to sneak in on some Pen Zeros and Voltron is back. And, uh, oh, my gosh, uh, the other Transformers and Rescue Bots. And let's see, don't forget Sophia the First and the world-famous Goldie and Bear is uh, coming to a TV near you. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a slim chance that Hondo Naka is coming back in the second season for uh, Star Wars Clone Wars. Just saying. But it's going to be, oh, I'm sorry, Rebels. Clone Wars, too, but Rebels. So uh, stay tuned. That's very exciting, and thank you for mentioning Charming. Um, if assuming the the two people are the same, um, you said the Chinese artist Gem. Yes. G E M. Yes. Um, we've been playing her music since her debut, so um, many of the fans are See? aware of her. You are yeah. plugged in. Yes. <laughs> um, she she has a wonderful singing voice, so um, I'm I'm sure the fans are ecstatic to hear that um, you guys will be on the same feature together. I am too. I'm ecstatic first, so there. No, I'm. Uh, it's 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 a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I always like to do uh, to sing too, and I don't think the king's gonna get any songs. But uh, what are you gonna do? As long as Jim's there, we'll be fine. Well, they do. her and Demi Lovato and Avril Lavigne. I mean, geez, forget about it. I think we're good. <laughs> well, they do always say that you know musicality helps with voiceover. So. Oh, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Some of the best VO artists are uh, also st singers. I mean, I, that's how I started. And, you know, there's a musicality to it, to our speech patterns. And, you know, if you think about it, when you're doing an impression, you know, you have to, you know, like Christopher 
Walcon. You know, everybody's got a, he, he's, all of his stuff sounds like it's in a minor key. Oh, you know, he's got that sound and uh, it's unmistakable. And I think, you know, a musical background helps uh, with, I, I think it's just like a little boost in voiceover. Plus, you know, already know how to work the mic, that's for sure. And you definitely have some diaphragm control and some breathing, um, you yeah. know, advantages that other people might not have. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Absolutely. Well, I'll now, for the, for the fans out there, since we're nearing the end of this interview, I was wondering if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. And that tradition is? Well, we ask everyone, whether they're a voice actor or not, if they'd be willing to do a bump for us. To do a which? A bumper? Uh, yeah, a bumper. Basically, oh, yes. Yeah, cool. Sure. Basically, we ask if you could say, hey, my name is, I do this, and you can put whatever you want there. And well, there you go. Yeah, and you're tuned into 91.8, the fan. Yes, indeed. Well, there you go. All right, here, let me, let me dive in. Hello out there and out there land. My name is Jim Cummings. You may not know me as Jim Cummings, but I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the bug that splatters across the windshield of crime. I am Darkwing Duck. And um, I'm also winning the pool. And Tigger, too, but don't forget about that. That's ridiculous. Just don't forget to remember to keep on bouncing and listening to 91.8 The Fan, which you're listening to right now, in case you didn't know. Oh, my God, that put uh, such a big smile on my face. <laughs> so there you go. I think that'll work, right? That was perfect. Thank you so much. My and pleasure. For the fans out there, is there anything else you want to say to them? Any words of wisdom, dating advice, anything like that? Oh, gosh. Well, yes. Uh, you know, say your prayers. Take your vitamins. Listen to mom and dad. Uh, stay in school. Be cool. And other hackneyed cliches. But, <laughs> but only the good ones, and if they're true. Now, but I, I can tell you this. I just want to say thank you to all of you guys out there that, uh, you know, past, present, future uh, folks that are tuned in and uh, enjoyed my work over the years because it's, uh, you know, without you guys, uh, there's no us. And it's I'm only serious. And I'm just very, very grateful to each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't know what to say. I'm overwhelmed with the love and the sweetness that I, I get back from so many people. And I just have to say thank you. Thank you to each of you. And, you know, God bless you all. God bless America. I think we're we're lucky we're all in the, the best country in the world and uh I think we forget that every now and then too. So I'm I'm grateful for it all and, and take care one and all. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was fabulous. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8 the fan where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. <laughs>